couch potatoism is more than a lifestyle, it's a philosophy after all. And we're looking for those people that are dedicated viewers. A lot of uh, local Dixonites, uh, we live close to the town of Dixon, are pretty much confounded by the whole thing. They're baffled by what the couch potatoes really are and do. In fact, one lady that works at the post office that just retired last month uh, thought I was a potato farmer as I brought in mail to send off. The basic philosophy of the couch potato mo movement is to watch as much as possible. Uh, most people on the average watch about eight hours a day. Uh, the couch potatoes on the average start from there and work upwards. The potato is the natural icon for our group. The potato after all is a tuber and is covered with eyes and it seemed a natural for us. One of the major disciplines of the couch potato lifestyle is simul viewing and so we watch five or more TV sets at once tuned to different stations and different shows and through this act of prolonged viewing you get to the point of being a televisionary, one of the higher statuses of the couch potato philosophy. I get, I get to watch up to 20 hours a day. Lucky guy. It's so much fun. <laughs> well, I think it's easier than welfare. It's just something to do. Originally, the Couch Tomatoes were a step and fetch organization invented by the Couch Potatoes. Um, if you were a female, you were the one that was required to run to the store for more snacks answer the phone and tell the person that he wasn't home, um, prepare TV dinners. Um, it was a little bit difficult at first to convince the guys that things were going to change, um, but we came up with this really great phrase that seemed a little harsh, may seem a little harsh to some of the more sensitive, but uh, it really works. It's it obtini tui ipsi o asinus. In harsher terms, get it yourself at. The Catch Potato Movement provides a newsletter journal titled The Tuber's Voice, which celebrates the joys and addresses the problems of the movement. We have different articles about TV and philosophy. And we also have the advice to the couch potato. For people out there with problems about viewing, um, we offer counseling to that, and that's provided by our counselor, Dr. Davenport H. Spud. As adv advice expert for the couch potatoes, I run into a lot of the same sorts of problems um, year after year. And one of them is video guilt, which is the idea that people actually feel guilty for watching TV, which, of course, is ridiculous. But uh, the main reason this happens is because of people like their parents or their bosses who want them to come in and, and work instead of watching TV or school teachers, that sort of thing. For instance, I've got a letter here from my advice column. Dear Dr. Spud, my mom won't let me watch TV. She says TV makes people violent. What can I tell, tell her to change her mind? And uh, my answer was that that's ridiculous, that depriving a male child of, of TV can cause uh, telecastration anxiety, and that... Uh, that's one of the manifestations of video guilt. Um, one of the things that couch potatoes try to do is uh, tell people that it's okay to watch TV. And we tell them to come out of the closet and it's, it's okay to watch. In fact, TV viewing is, is really beneficial to people. Um, it makes you more relaxed, it increases your alpha waves, it reduces your heart rate. In fact, we call it transcendental vegetation just because there are so many good positive benefits to TV viewing. In treating patients here, uh, I, I found that Gilligan's therapy is one of the most effective ways of reaching people who normally can't be reached. Basically, I have people watch weekend after weekend of Gilligan's Island. That I found that each person on Gilligan's Island is symbolic of a part of the human psyche. That you've got Gilligan as the spontaneous child, and you've got the professor who's the rational adult, and you've got the skipper who's the judgmental parent, and you've got uh, Ginger who's sexuality personified, and so on and so on. 
And one of the things that happens when people become mentally ill is that they get an imbalance of these different parts of their character. So by watching Gilligan's Island and watching people interact the way that people do on Gilligan's Island, we find that they can become, become well. And the entire program is a metaphor for mental illness. You know, there's a shipwreck because these people are imbalanced. You, know, you can even see it in the theme song. You know, they talk about the first couple of years, it's not even, they don't even mention the professor and Marianne, it's just, and the rest. You see, that's where the imbalance comes in, in the show. And later they eventually get included in the theme song, which just shows that eventually that those people get well, or that person gets well who's, who's uh, personified there, and they even actually get rescued in the last episode. One of the Couch Potato Ten Commandments is, thou shalt eat food that is nourishing to thy couch potatoism. And we take that seriously. We think it's important that people eat from the five major couch potato food groups. And those food groups are salt, sugar, carbohydrates, alcohol, and grease. And so it's, the important part is you want to have the perfect couch potato physique. And that physique is not that kind of skinny bit or muscle-bound bit, but actually you want to have kind of a pear shape, preferably. You know, one man's fat is another man's ballast is kind of what we have in mind. That you want kind of a body heavy, body heavy weight distribution so that it keeps you on the couch even when you kind of doze off in front of the TV. All right. Right now I'm going to talk a little bit about couch potato sustenance or squeezing. And here I've got some franks. Squeezing is where you use squeeze bottle cheese, uh, margarine, other things. And these are snacks you can prepare during a normal station break or commercial. Snacks made in under two and a half minutes. First of all, we take the frank and uh, we want to hone it out to create an orifice for the cheese. And we use a hand electric drill. But for safety reasons, I use these safety goggles. For you'll see that uh, flying meat particles can be a real problem for couch potatoes. Uh, Blinding yourself for could be a real problem for late night viewing, getting a piece of wiener in the eye or something. And we simply take the dog, and it's good to hold it in the pack like this. Don't want accidents to happen. And uh, get right in there and hone it out a little bit. Got to watch out for that flying meat. All right, good. Now we take some aerosol cheese and fill to capacity. Ooh, this is going to be good. Yes. And uh, we retrieve the dog from the pack. Get a little greasy here with this aerosol stuff. And take a piece of generic white bread. Place like this, kind of crimp in. Spread with some squeeze margarine around. Give it a nice layer of grease so it goes down easier. And uh, perhaps a little of this squeezed chocolate. And this is going to be good. Crimp it in a little bit, fold in. Keep it from dripping too much and creating a mess on your couch. Then take over to your main, accout main accoutrement for all viewing experiences, the to handy toaster oven. I think it's our little snack is just about ready. Let's check it out. Ah, voila. Ooh, doesn't this look good? The cheese chalk dog as developed by Chef Aldo. Mmm. Careful bite. We have the Ten Commandments of Couch Potato Etiquette. One of them is, thou shalt have no other entertainments before me. Thou shalt not talk when the set is on, nor shalt thou make distracting noises. Thou shalt not block the vision of thy neighbor. Thou shalt not change the channel without unanimous consent. Thou shalt wear thy couch potato viewing tunic. Thou shalt not watch anything educational or British, except maybe Benny Hill. Thou shalt keep thy horizontal held. Uh, they shall keep thy color bright and thy sound well-tuned for obvious reasons. Well, TV has taught me a lot of things, and one of those things is 
music. I've learned a lot about music from TV, and now I'd like to perform for you a little piece. Uh, I've learned, uh, it's a theme song for Father Knows Best. And we prove here, by our profound endeavors, that TV is a lifestyle which one can become proud of. You can live rich, wonderful lives in a vicarious fashion through TV. It's our friend and it's to be cherished and embraced.